Hi, in this video we are going to be talking about hair evidence. Human hair is one of the most frequently found pieces of evidence at a crime scene. Um, usually violent crimes, you know, people are flailing around and so hair will fall out. From hair, there are many different things we can determine. First off, we can easily determine if it's human or animal hair. Sometimes we can determine race, but race can be a little difficult nowadays. We can figure out what part of the body it came from. You know, if it's arm hair, eyelashes, whether the hair was forcibly removed or if it just fell out, if it's been treated with chemicals or colored, and you can also tell from hair if any drugs or poisons have been ingested. Let's look at the basics of what hair is. You have hair follicles all in your skin and the hair gets formed down there and comes out. So you have the root is attached down in the follicle. The follicle itself will never come out. It is a part of the skin. That skin though has DNA. Hair itself does not have that same nuclear DNA and we'll talk about the difference. Let's look at the structure of hair. It is often compared to a wooden pencil. So look at the wooden pencil in the picture. We've got different layers. We're going to go through the different layers and what they do. So the cuticle is the outer part of the layer. So it's like the paint on the outside of the pencil. That is made with scales. You can see a zoomed in picture. It's kind of like those Pantene commercials that show you the scales. And they protect the hair. The scales always point away from the roots. So if you only find part of the hair, you can tell which way it came from. The next layer is the cortex. That is like the wooden part of the pencil. That's the largest part of the hair and it's filled with melanin which is a pigment that gives hair color so the more melanin you have the more color you have and that is also the layer that determines what shape your hair has um, if you have any kind of chemicals done to change the shape of your hair you know get a perm or straighten lots of times you are messing around with the cortex the medulla is the center of the hair it is like the lead in a wooden pencil now it's a little weird because it is a tube that's down the middle of the hair. It can be filled with dark cells that fill it up in different patterns or it may not have anything in it which means it looks like it doesn't even exist but it is there. So there are some examples and we will look at more underneath microscope. What can we find out from hair? If hair has been ripped out it is considered individual evidence because it will have cells from the follicle on it which can tie directly to you because it has DNA in it. The cells from the follicle have DNA. Remember, the follicle itself does not get ripped out. Hair is considered class evidence if it doesn't have follicle cells. That is when like your hair just falls out on its own and has not been ripped out. Class evidence can narrow things down to a group of people. So let's say you find a brown hair at the crime scene. It doesn't have a root with follicle cells on it, but you could tie it to everybody with that same type of hair. The root. Roots look a little different, whether they are falling out on their own or they are forcibly removed. So right here are a couple of examples, and you will see this in class on Monday. Uh, if you forcibly remove it, you actually get a tag of skin. It's a follicle tag is what we call it. And it will uh, have some DNA in it, a lot more cells to it. Uh, most of them are going to have that sort of club or spear shape. Life cycle of hair. There are three main parts of the life cycle of hair. And we're going to go through each of them real quickly here. And it is in alphabetical order to help you remember a little bit. Antigen is the first part, and this is when hair grows. It's actively growing. The follicle's making more and more of it. 80-90% of your hair is currently in this phase right now. The length of it, how long your hair stays growing and growing and growing, varies from person to person and different parts of your body. So I don't know if you've ever known somebody who keeps trying to grow their hair out and it will only go to a certain length, but your hair will grow longer. Everybody's different on how long your hair will grow. Same thing with eyelashes will only grow to a certain point and then they'll fall out. Uh, otherwise we'd have eyelashes that were like five feet long and that'd be a little weird. The next stage is catagen. This is when the growth slows down and then stops. 
it only lasts a couple of weeks. So your hair is growing, 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 and then it starts to slow and stops. The follicle is going to shrink away from it and the root will start to break free. The last st stage is the uh, telogen stage and this is when the hair just rests inside the follicle. It's not really attached. It's like if you were to brush your hair and you get a bunch of hair in your brush, a lot of that is going to be the telogen. It's just hair that's existing in there until it gets removed. Uh, this can last five to six weeks. Uh, eventually the root will make a new hair and it will start pushing the old hair out. It's kind of like when you lost your baby teeth and the, your adult teeth started coming back out. Alright, what can we find out from hair? There's a lot of different things we can look at to um, determine who the hair came from. One thing we can do is we can look under a microscope and we can use all kinds of um, dyes, different UV lights, all kinds of things in order to determine if any chemicals have been used in the hair. And we can also look and see if any drugs have been um, absorbed by the human body. Hair that has been bleached or dyed, it makes hair really brittle and it messes with those scales on the cuticle. Dyeing changes the color of the cuticle and the cortex. Unless you do a temporary color, if you do a temporary color, it's only covering the cuticle. If you do it too much though, it can harm your cuticle. You can look and see how uh, much has grown out from the root to determine how long roughly it's been since somebody colored their hair. All right, so what are some differences between animal hair and human hair? The cuticle shape is different. We will look at that under microscopes in class, but here are just three different examples. Uh, humans tend to have the imbricate uh, shape, but animals will lots of times have these spines all over or something that's called coronal. It looks like a bunch of crowns stacked on top of one another. Another thing is our hair, the pigment, the color tends to be out towards the uh, outer edge of the cortex to the cuticle. For animals, it tends to be closer to the medulla. Human hair is usually only one color unless you color it. Animals, though, can have banded colors, so like it might be black, then white, then gray, or however, and on one hair. Another thing that's different is something that's called the medullary index. This means that how much space within the hair the medulla takes up. For animals, the medulla is much, much thicker, much wider than human and we will look at that under microscopes. What are some things that we can figure out? We can do this thing called neutron activation analysis, NAA. And what that can do is it can identify 14 specific things that are in the hair and it can help match people. Like if you just find a hair and you're trying to match it to a specific person, it can help. Uh, it can also help ex uh, figure out whether somebody's been exposed to poisons or any kind of narcotics. The average hair, now everybody's a little different, this is average. Average hair grows about 1.3 centimeters a month. And so if we take that average, we can get a rough idea on how long um, somebody has had drugs in their system. So if three inches of their hair is filled with drugs, then you know that they've been doing drugs for many months. DNA. So we have two different types of DNA in our body. We have nuclear DNA. That is the kind that is just ours or if you happen to have an identical twin. The other type is mitochondrial DNA and that is the DNA that comes from your mom. So everybody related to your mom, blood related, will have that on her mom's side. So you have your mom's mitochondrial DNA, she has her mom's and so on and so on. So that is actually class evidence. You could only tie it to members of your family. And it's more expensive than regular DNA, so they only do it if they absolutely have to. Uh, this is just random info that I thought was kind of fun. The number of hairs on typical heads. Red heads have the least with about 80,000. Dark-haired people have about 100,000 and blondes have 120. We'll do a bunch of labs in class. So thanks for watching and make sure that you keep up with all of this. Thanks.